Is aerospace engineering actually worth it today in 2025? Everyone usually comes and shows you those cool designs, cool rockets, cool aircrafts, and all of the cool stuff that aerospace engineers do. But today I'm coming to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. In this video, I'm going to talk about what aerospace engineering is, the workload, the career opportunities, my personal experience, salaries, and so on. So stick around because this is going to be a long one. First of all, let me introduce myself. Hi, I am Tala and I just graduated as a mechanical and aerospace engineer from McGill University. I previously worked in different aerospace companies such as the Canadian Space Agency and at Airbus and I have participated in the past in different extracurricular activities such as the McGill Rocket Team, launching rockets with SETS Canada and so on. And I'm going to speak more about my personal experience later on in the video. But anyway, this is just a quick introduction. First things first, what is aerospace engineering? Aerospace engineering can be divided into two different branches. First of all, we have aeronautics and we have astronautics. Aeronautics is mostly related to aircraft, drones, propulsion systems and so on. Astronautics is mostly related to spaceships, satellites, basically the study of everything that is outer space. Depending on your skill set and your, of course, your preference, your aerospace engineer can work on different things. They can work in the aircraft industry, in the space industry, in these agencies like government space agencies. They can work on rovers, they can work on satellites, on CubeSats. You really have a variety of things to choose from. In terms of salaries, usually aerospace engineers, on average, are considered to be well paid. Your starting salary can start from $7,000 a year, uh, I'm talking about the United States and in Canada, and could go up to $120,000, $130,000, depending of course on your position, your job, the workplace, and so on. Now let's talk about the aerospace engineering degree at university. We're going to talk about the workload, the classes, and so on. In general, if you're doing the bachelor's in aerospace engineering, the first two years are going to be mostly math, physics, chemistry classes, so the core classes. You will have upper level math classes, also upper level physics classes, usually depending on your university, of course. The first two years are going to be common to all engineering degrees. For example, if you're doing mechanical, electrical, software, or so on, you're going to all be taking the same math classes, physics classes. Of course, there's going to be some classes that differ from one engineer to another. And then during your third and fourth year, you start taking more aerospace engineering classes. So you'll have classes like propulsion classes, spacecraft design, you'll learn about the airframe, flight control, and so on. So they become more specific to the aerospace engineering degree. Also depending on the university, of course, but some universities let you specialize in a specific thing. Since aerospace is very broad, you'll have different streams and you can pick one stream and start specializing in the specific stream. For example, in aerospace, you can focus more on the airframe, on the propulsion systems, on let's say the avionics, the flight control and so on. So depending on the university, of course, and depending on the available streams, you can start specializing during your third or fourth year. Personally speaking about McGill University and what I did, at McGill University, there was no aerospace engineering bachelors. There was only an aerospace engineering minor. What I did is I took the mechanical engineering bachelors and I paired it with a minor in aerospace engineering. I'm sure some of you are wondering if aerospace engineering is a hard degree. Talking from personal experience, I won't lie, yes, it was a hard degree. I found it to be hard. Some classes are challenging. You'll have to put work into them. Some exams are hard, but I would definitely recommend it if you enjoy aerospace and engineering. If you like it, then you'll definitely enjoy your degree and you'll be happy to be learning all about aerospace. Yes, it is hard, but you'll enjoy it if you like aerospace. Next topic, I'm gonna talk about my university experience and the projects I was working on as an aerospace engineer. I'm sure most of the people that go into aerospace engineering wanna build a rocket, wanna work on aircraft, satellites, rovers, propulsion systems, and so on. And to answer the question, if engineers actually work on those big projects, I'm gonna answer and say yes. So aerospace engineers do get the chance to work on those projects at university or on a higher level within your career. Of course, depending on your job and the company and so on. So I'm gonna talk about my personal experience and what are the different projects I worked on as an aerospace engineering student. During my time at McGill University, within my aerospace and mechanical engineering classes, my classes at McGill University specifically were mostly theoretical. The classes at McGill were not really uh, hands-on. We had some labs, some projects, of course, hands-on projects, but most of the classes were focused on the theoretical part. In order to get this hands-on experience, for example, to build a rocket, to build a CubeSat, to, to launch balloons. I had to join different design teams within my degree. And those extracurriculars were completely outside of the curriculum. So they were not graded, they were not within a class. But everything I did was extra work. Honestly, it was the most fun I had during my engineering degree. And I would recommend any person interested in aerospace to go look for those extracurricular activities, projects, design competitions, and so on. Because this is what makes you work on those very cool projects. For example, during my engineering degree, the first club I joined was the McGill Rocket Team. And you'll find rocket teams 
at most of the universities in Canada and the United States, even outside, so Europe and so on. And within this design team, you'll be able to build rockets and launch them at major competitions. So for example, for our rocket team, we were participating in two different competitions. We were participating in a competition called Launch Canada, which was in Canada. And we were participating also in a competition called Spaceport America Cup, which was in New Mexico in the United States. During my five years at McGill, I was able to join this design team and learn a lot from them and get the hands-on experience and actually build a rocket and go to competition and launch it. During my second year on the team, I was able to travel with the McGill rocket team to both competitions. So we traveled to Spaceport America competition and the Launch Canada competition. And I was able to launch the rocket with my team and see it actually launch in front of us and see also not only our rocket launch, but different teams rocket launch. And it was a super cool experience just watching those rocket launch and the work that you put into that rocket and you see it just fly was super cool and I would really recommend it. Another project I was working on was launching high altitude balloons. So I was leading this project for a couple of years and basically what we were doing is that every year we would launch three high altitude balloons. No, it's not the helium small balloons that, that you might have in mind, but it's those big latex balloons that we would fill with helium and we would launch on those balloons scientific experiments. And those launches and this team was just incredible. I got to learn a lot of things from electronics to mechanical systems, to 3D printing, to working with the team, to the flight operations, the recovery of the balloon and so on. It just taught me a lot and I learned a lot as an engineer. Uh, other things I also was able to join with my aerospace engineering degree. I was able to go to the European Space Agency and do a workshop there about CubeSats, able to learn about CubeSats, how to test them. I was able to test in thermal vacuum chambers and do vibration tests for CubeSats at the European Space Agency, which was super cool. I was also able to go to NASA to join a conference and be part of the NASA social team. So within your aerospace engineering degree, there's a lot of things you could do, a lot of things you can learn from. And even though you're still a student, don't think that if you're a student, you cannot build a rocket, a rover, a satellite, an air, a small drone or whatever. You can do it. Just join a team and there's a lot of competitions, a lot of things that are available to students. I'll put some links in the description. So if you're interested in doing some kind of extracurricular work, you might find some cool stuff within those links. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is careers in aerospace engineering. So I'm sure many of you are wondering, is there careers in aerospace engineering? Is it the time to be in aerospace and so on? So I would answer the question that yes, it is the time to be an aerospace engineer. There's a lot of jobs opening up. And in terms of companies, there's a lot of companies that are focusing on aerospace right now. For example, there's Airbus, there's Bell, there's the Canadian Space Agency, there's NASA, there's SpaceX, there's Kepler Communications, there's RFA, uh, European Space Agency. I can name a thousand. There's a lot of different companies that are related to aerospace and all of them are doing so many cool stuff. So depending on what you are interested in, you can find a lot of companies that are offering those aerospace engineering jobs. Also, I want to note that to work in those aerospace engineering companies, you don't necessarily have to have an aerospace engineering degree. For example, at Airbus, there's a lot of people that are mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, software engineers, not only engineers, but there's a lot of scientists, um, there's a lot of researchers, there's a lot of people from marketing, from business, from communications. So all kinds of different backgrounds. So you don't have to be an aerospace engineer to work in an aerospace company. In terms of competition and how hard it is to get into this aerospace engineering companies, I would say like most degrees and most jobs, the higher end companies are a bit more competitive to get. So for example, if you want to work at SpaceX, NASA, Canadian Space Agency, and so on, it might be a bit more competitive. However, this is common to most degrees, most jobs, and so on. So it really depends. Also to add on to aerospace, jobs and opportunities it is a bit hard to find an aerospace job talking more about the space sector it is hard to find a job if you're not from the specific country so let's say for example i'm a non-us citizen and if i want to work in companies in the united states for example nasa spacex lockheed martin rocket lab in the united states so most of those jobs require the people to be either us citizen or you have the green card, or of course there's exceptions where people can not have a green card or the citizenship, but it is much harder for me to find jobs in the United States within the aerospace engineering field. It's not only the United States, but it's also like worldwide. Since we're talking about career and job opportunities within aerospace engineering, I'm gonna talk about my personal experience while looking for a job within the aerospace engineering degree. During my five years at McGill, I did a couple of internships and they are considered more like industry work. So I worked at Airbus and I worked at the Canadian Space Agency. I've always wanted to work at the Canadian Space Agency. It was like a dream for me. Like even before going to Canada, I even had 
I'm gonna insert the picture here. I had said to myself that I hope I'll be one day at the Canadian Space Agency. So once I got to work there, it was just like a I did it moment and I was so happy and I loved my job there. At my job at Airbus, it was mostly a desk job. So I was working with the customer engineering team and the team was really nice and I really enjoyed my internships. I got to learn a lot about the aeronautical field, about the aircrafts. It was more like a desk job. During my other internships with the Canadian Space Agency, I was working with the stratospheric balloon team. So that team also launched high altitude balloons and I was able to work a lot in the lab get hands-on work, uh, help the team uh, during the campaign. So I traveled with the Canadian Space Agency during my internship and we launched a couple of balloons uh, during that campaign and I was able to be there and help out the team. And it was a really fun job. So yeah, you can find everything within the aerospace engineering field. You can find jobs where it requires more hands-on, more desk work, more lab work, more research and so on. The next thing I wanna talk about is proof of aerospace engineering in 2025. In terms of the industry in 2025 for aerospace engineering, I believe that the aerospace industry is growing. There's a lot of new projects that they're working on. For example, there's some companies that are trying to do electric aircraft instead of fuel-based aircrafts. Uh, for example, space agencies are trying to go to the moon again. They're trying to do commercial flights. They're trying to integrate more AI within their designs. They're trying to go to Mars. Uh, they're trying to build new satellites to go to asteroids and so on. So I believe it is the time for aerospace engineers and this industry is growing. So if you would ask me if it's still worth it to get an aerospace engineering degree in 2025, my answer is yes. If you like aerospace engineering, there's a lot of cool projects that you could be involved in. So I think I can end the video here. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If there's a lot of questions, I might do a part two. I know there's still a lot of things that I can get into, but I think for the first part, it's just a quick overview and a brief introduction about aerospace engineering. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye!